morning, church. It's good to see you all this morning. Oh, let's all stand. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this day you've given us. We thank you for this opportunity that we can come together with one voice to worship your name, Lord. You alone are worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. God is good and all the time. Amen. We worship you, Jesus. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah. Than the unbelief, I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Oh, I'll raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Amen. I'll raise a hallelujah with everything inside of 
morning the king is still alive amen sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder oh sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder we'll sing a little louder in the presence of my enemy Sing a little louder. worship our praise all the glory and honor hallelujah we sing praises to you lord because you loved us because how oh, much that you've done for us lord we thank you jesus sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder hallelujah sing a little louder Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Oh, we'll sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. Hallelujah! Yes, Jesus, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah! You are so great and great greatly to be praised. Hallelujah.
thank you for what you have done in our lives, Lord. Turn our sinful life away from us. Brought us into the light, your light, into redemption. Thank you. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. No, they're not. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Yes, Lord. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Say that again. There's nothing. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Amen. I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Thank you, Jesus, because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley, and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn graves into gardens you turn bones into armies you turn seas into highways you're the only one who can turn morning you turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Yes, Jesus, you're the only one. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are so great and greatly to be praised. We were nothing, Lord, without you. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus, we worship you, Lord. We were nothing. We are nothing without you, Lord. It's because of you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Yes, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. As we just close our eyes and just can see how good the Lord has been to us. What he has done for us, to us, in us. We've all been through so much in our past, our sinful lives. But because he came down to earth, lived as a man, died for our sins and then rose again all our past all that sinful lifestyle is gone we ask the Lord to forgive us we repent we turn from that so we do never we never have to deal with that again it is gone as far as the east is from the west the Lord forgets it you ask him to forgive you all the stuff again he goes like no I, there's nothing to forgive because I don't remember it. It is gone. We thank you, Jesus, for getting rid of our sinful lives. We thank you for dying on the cross to save us and then rising again, knowing that we have eternal life with you. Eternal life with you, Lord. With you. That is amazing, eternally. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you are so good. Nothing can compare. Nothing. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you, Jesus. Lord, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. See that one more time. Oh, there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you saying, Jesus, forgive me. Your word says that when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Praise God for that. But one thing to keep in mind, your situation, whether you're in the highest of highs or lowest of lows, your situation does not dictate God's goodness in your life. His goodness in your life is always there. His forgiveness in your life is always there. That no matter what you're going through in life, you may be beaten down by shame and by guilt. You may say, Pastor, I'm not going through anything. Great. 
A lot of people are. But it's not the issue that causes God to say, well, you're going through this. I, I guess my goodness is only going to be this much. Oh, you're doing a great job, so I'm going to give you a lot more. His goodness is steady. It's constant. So, matter as we fluctuate like a sine wave, God's that constant line right through that. I believe we'll just, if we can just grasp that, hold of that, it helps to put things in perspective. To realize we're going through these struggles now. But the Bible tells me that if I endure to the end, I have a crown of life waiting for me. I don't know about you. I kind of like that. I always tell you guys this. It's not a little Burger King crown. It's a big crown with jewels in it. Because that's who God is. So no matter what you're going through today, don't for one second think that God doesn't have his eyes on you. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And if he can make sure the birds are taken care of and the animals are taken care of, don't you think, being in the creation of God, we're going to make man in our image and blew life into us, don't you think he's got us? in the palm of his hand. This world's going to give you happiness. The world's going to take it away. But there's a joy that God gives us that's unspeakable and full of glory. And the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world's not going to take it away. I'm not going to let my situation dictate my joy in God. Okay. So as we continue to worship, let's have everybody just close your eyes right this second. Where are you at in your walk with Christ today? You have that relationship with Him. It's as simple as right where you're at, say, Father, forgive me. And teach me to love you. And I believe by doing that, you're going to begin to feel that forgiveness come over you. So, Father, hear their cries today. them worship you today because of who you are, the forgiver of our sins. It doesn't matter what else goes on in our lives, Lord. It's all because of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's Jesus. lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me who oh, the sun sets free oh it's free indeed i'm a child of god yes i am Free last, he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me, who the Son sets free, oh, is free. child of God, yes I am, in my Father's house, there's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am, I am chosen, not forsaken, I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am 
who you say I am. I am chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Who the sun sets free. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, Sing it again, I church. am. Sing it out again, church. Who the sun set free. The sun sets Lift your voices, church. Oh, it's free and deep. I'm a Thank child you, of God. Thank you, Father. Yes, I am. Thank you, Father. In my Father's Thank you, Lord. house, I am yours today. there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You've called me a child of God today. And, Father, you've ransomed me. In the midst of my sin, in the midst of my shame, in the midst of my guilt, Father, it was on that cross where you died, but you came off of that. They put you in the grave thinking they're going to contain you. But the grave couldn't hold you down. And because of that, Lord, I am free today. Your word declares where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom from our past. Freedom from shame. Freedom from guilt. Freedom from sin. All because of you, Lord. And because of that, I'm called a child of God. I thank you, Lord, for who you are and for what you do, Lord. But we're unworthy because of your death and your resurrection, you've called us worthy. I thank you for that today, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. But she has, we have a special treat from our youth, so I'm going to just turn everything over to Christy. Can we give her a big Hope Church welcome? <laughs> to behind every great man, there's a woman pushing him. And she pushes me along really well. She's the, the lid to my blender. Man, go home and try to do something without your wife there. You find out. 
It gets, it gets done, but it gets messy. And we learn how to do it the right way because they showed us how. Amen? All right. We also have a special treat, not just with me, but we have a group of ladies that I've asked them to um, come up, and they actually have a name. They are called Zealous Hope. So, ladies, if you can come up here, um, they are going to do a human video for you. So let's just go ahead and let them minister. not hidden there's never been a moment you were forgotten you are not hopeless though you have been broken your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be a shelter. I'll be your Those young ladies really practiced a long time, spent a lot of time at my house. So thank you very much. Children, you can go down to your class right now.
I am super proud of them. They did a wonderful job and they talked and depending on how they, how they did today, they may be actually taking this to fine arts to compete against other um, people uh, in the district in our state. So um, as Pastor Chris had said, today is National Women's Day and I believe my message isn't today just for women, but I believe it's for the men also. So um, I am super grateful to be able to minister to today. And as you see, the human video will also be part of, you know, how we, um, of my message today. I want to ask you, if you're dealing with anything, and when I mean anything, it could be physical, spiritual, emotional, relational. It could be something in your family. It could be something private. It could be anything. And I'm going to ask you to please be open today and listen. We've heard this whole year about what pastor has been talking about. And none of it is for us to sit and do nothing. None of it is anything that requires us to just sit. A lot of it is something that requires action. It requires us to do something. So I'm going to ask you to take a bold step. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to say anything. Nobody's going to do anything. But if you are dealing with anything, it may not necessarily be anything in, on the list that I gave you. But if you are dealing for anything, I'm going to ask you to please come up and take a chain. I'm going to ask you to be honest. I am not going to judge you. I am not going to ask you to do anything. If there's, I think I made 18, but please be honest. If there's anything that you are going through, I ask you to please come and take one. And just hold on to it. As you notice, these are not very heavy. Let's bow our heads. Father God, I just ask you today to please just minister to us today. Lord, speak through me because I know this is a message that deals with all of us. And I ask you to please allow today to be a day of change. I thank you, Jesus. If we can turn in our Bibles to Isaiah 52. We're going to read the first four verses. And I want you to realize that each and every one of us has a Bible. And yes, these are God's words, but today as I read, I want you to think about these words. And God is speaking to you through the Bible, through his word. These are all for you. It's not just for me to say or me to read, but it's for you. In verse 52, or I'm sorry, chapter 52, verse 1, it says, Wake up, wake up, O Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. 
put on your beautiful clothes, O holy city of Jerusalem. For unclean and godless people will enter your gates no longer. Rise from the dust, O Jerusalem. Sit in the place of honor. Remove the chains of slavery from around your neck. O captive daughter of Zion, for this is what the Lord says. When I sold you into exile, I received no payment. Now I redeem you without having to pay for you. And the, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Long ago, my people chose. That's a key word. My people chose to live in Egypt. Now they are oppressed by Assyria. They chose. Pastor said that if we wanted to go farther than ankle deep in the river, we had to choose to go deeper. Okay? Pastor said if we want more, we have to choose. But do you catch that long ago, my people chose to live in Egypt, and now they are oppressed? We hold ourselves back. What are our chains? We pick these up, we have them. What are these? These are our choices. These are our burdens. And for some people, this is our life. And when we look at these, they hold us back. We can sit here week after week and say, yes, I want to go farther than my ankles. I want to be able to jump in. I want to be able to move. I want more of you. I want to be able to have but do we really realize what holds us down? Do we realize the heaviness? I have two dogs, Kit and Chloe, and they're on leads. And I have it and it's screwed in the middle here. And, and they, they go around and there's times where they get caught up and, and Kit goes around and she's stuck and she can't come in. Chloe's already in, and Kit's like, wait, what about me? Or they get tangled up to where it's so short. But you know, every time they go out, they get attached to their lead. Why? So they won't run away. So they won't go away. They won't get out of their yard. They won't get into that area. But I want you to realize the devil does the same thing to us. Why? So we won't go far away from him. So we won't go to where God wants us to be. And a lot of times we get tangled up like that dog with a lead. And we get tangled up and we see our friends moving towards Christ. We see our loved ones. We see our spouses. When I was a new Christian, I remember looking at pastor because he'd grown up in church. And I remember looking at him and saying, you hate me. You don't want me to go to heaven with you. And he goes, what are you talking about? I said, you're learning. You're understanding Jesus. You're understanding the book of Acts. You already know what to look for in Revelation. I'm stuck back here in Genesis trying to understand the history of the God that I serve. I said, but you're leaving me behind. I was like, Kit, I was cut. And I'm shouting, but all I had to do was just get up and start walking. It's not his responsibility, but he's there to encourage me. He's there to pray with me. He's there to teach me. He's there to, to walk beside me. But it's, it's my choice whether or not I'm going to get stuck or not. But there's a time... We had, we've had a couple dogs, you know, because dogs don't live that long. But I remember having um, our lab, Sadie. And I go outside, and she's just walking around. Her lead had broken. And she was just walking around. And she didn't leave her circle, praise God, because we lived in the country. But she was just super excited that her chain actually reached the door, and I didn't have to go out and let her in. But she still had that attached to her. And so we get in our habit. 
We may step out a little bit, but it takes a while. Now, see, Chloe goes a little bit more timidly than Kit. Once Kit realizes she's off her lead, like yesterday, she was like, oh, I can go over here, and I can go over here, and I can go over here because the snow's not right there. I had a, I had a perfect wall. <laughs> because they're short, like me. Um, but they were short, so they, they, weren't, they couldn't jump in or over because they would have drowned in the snow. So they were perfect right there, but then it, the snow's all gone, so they were like all looking and all excited to go. And, and a lot of times we don't realize how far we can go until we push our limits. There's words that I don't like is stagnant. To me, if we're stagnant, we are like that gross pond full of mold and algae and just junk and just there's a lot of things that are inside that are eating us up from the inside out that are dead but at the same time when it's flowing we don't have any limits and we can grow and we can be vibrant and we can be beautiful but when we when we push our limits we widen our horizons and we get to be bolder the definition of a chain is a connected, flexible series of metal links used for fastening or securing objects and pulling or supporting loads. There are times chains are helpful. Am I right? There's, there's times that a chain is very helpful when we're loading the wood up and we hook it up to the truck to help pull us or to help pull a tree down or to help guide for protection. But a lot of times we allow our chains to become too heavy and become a part of us and become limiting us. But also too, we tend to be too secured with these, too comfortable. And then when, we, when we're standing here and, and it's attached, and we, we keep pulling, and we realize those chains are not breaking because they're metal, they're stronger than us that we believe. We get tired. We get, they get heavy. We get weary. And then we think, what have we done? We allowed our, char our, our chains to hold us back. We look at our situations and we just stay there. We're settled in our area. We look at our circumstances and somehow we stop fighting. The key part of this in, verse in chapter 52, it says, wake up, wake up. Clothe yourself in strength. And if you look on down, it says, remove your chains from your, of slavery from your neck. The Israelites were in bondage for 400 years. The prophecy that came from that, Joseph had a dream and they mocked him. Because Joseph had a dream that his father and his brothers who were older would bow down to him. And so what did they do? They sold him into slavery only to fulfill what God's plan was. Joseph was put in that place for redemption. But then Joseph died. And they chose to go back to the lifestyle that they knew before, the slavery, the bondage. Because they were afraid of those that were above them. Job 36.8 says, but if people are bound in chains, they're held fast by cords of affliction. This is where we need to understand cords of affliction. We need to have courage. We need to know that there's enough is enough, and we need to be able to stand up. Psalms 2, 3 comes with the courage and says, let us break off their chains and throw off their shackles. That's not just about us. It's helping you. It's helping others. It's doing the little things. It's helping. 
I talked on my on my my Wednesday wisdom devotion on Friday with Fred. I talked about I had friends growing up in high school that were Christians that never once shared Jesus with me. And you can ask pastor, this has bothered me for 2 weeks. I had one person. We had a gentleman that was 21 our senior year that um, died in a car accident. And it was right before prom. And we all, all of us seniors, the school let all of us seniors go and we all went and met at a house. And we were all standing there and there was a gentleman that, that had just gotten saved and was called in the ministry. And this gentleman, he was very wise and we were all shocked because he was gonna be a doctor. He was gonna do something great. But you know what, he did something even greater. He became a pastor. And he was telling us about Jesus. And some of us didn't make, didn't, it didn't grasp. Until 10 years later, when I accept Jesus, I looked at my husband and I said, I understand what he was talking about. I get it. I called him. Or actually, I messaged him on Facebook. I didn't call him. I'm sorry. I messaged him on Facebook and I said, do you remember when we went after Scott died? When we went over and we were there talking and you shared this? I said, I get it. And this is why. And he's like, I don't remember saying that, but I'm grateful. But then this past week, I remembered I had dear friends, friends that were on my inner circle that never once shared Jesus with me. And I got mad. What was it in me? I was not very nice. I was the mean cheerleader. I'll tell you that. I was mean. I didn't care if I offended anybody. But at the same time, it wasn't until that I realized when I accepted Jesus that I needed to change. But, at the, but I wanted to, it bothered me because was I that terrible that they did not want to tell me about Jesus? I was walking around in chains. I was walking, I was in bondage. Was I invisible? Was I dirty? Was I unpleasant? Or was I just something to be tolerated? How many people walked by me? Think about that. How many people had to walk by you before anybody shared Jesus with you? That should infuriate you when you realize somebody didn't think you were worth it. And you know what's even more disheartening? How many people do we walk by? And we decide not to share Jesus with them. Because we're busy. Because they're dirty. Because they may be drunk. Because they may smell. Because they just... We just don't think they're worth it. I want you to think about this. In the New Testament, there was a city that the Jews would walk all the way around to avoid because that city was gross. I'm going to put it in layman's terms. They were gross. They were evil. They weren't worth it. They were just dumb people. It was Samaria. So they were walking back. And if we turn into, into John chapter 4, Jesus and his disciples decided that they were going to go back. They were hungry. They were tired. You know, how many of you husbands, you know, your wife says, I'm hungry. I'm tired. I have to go to the restroom right now take this next exit and there may not be something right there or it may be like a gross place. I don't know about you, but my, my dad John and, and my husband, they know the places to get the best coffee. If you need to know in this area where the best pie is, ask John. He will tell you what restaurants to go get the best pie. So he will drive out and we will go around because we will look at this place and, and as wives, we're like, come on, just stop. No, 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 this isn't a safe place. This isn't, can you just hold it? No. 
I, I'm, I really need to stop now. But yet we'll drive around until it looks safe. Now, I, granted, I know in today's society, you know, we have to be cautious. But at the same time, maybe God's calling us to that area. If we look in John chapter 4, in verse 1, it says, Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was, he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back one more time to Galilee. Now, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of the of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Are we catching this? This is going all the way back. Jacob gave this to Joseph. Okay? We already know what happened to Joseph, but we know Joseph had a purpose. So then Jacob's well was there, and Jesus was tired as he was from the journey. He sat by on the well, and it was about noon. It was about the hottest time of, of the day. And then... Samaritan woman came to draw water. He said to her, Will you give me a drink? A Samaritan woman. Jews were not supposed to talk to Samaritans. But what did Jesus do? He sat there and he said, Will you give me water? And it was at the hottest time of the day. And this woman goes out to the well. And a little bit of history about this woman. She tended to go out at the hottest time because of the lifestyle that she chose to live in. She didn't want to go out there where the women can judge her and be mean to her and the men can call her names and people could be mean to her. So she went out at the hottest time of the day where nobody was supposed to be there. And the Samaritan woman said to him, said, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus asked her, answered her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would give you living water. Jesus said, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for the living water. And as it goes on in here, when he looks at it, she says, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. She said, this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, you don't, don't you, or do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Verse 13. Jesus didn't say, a particular person here, a particular group. He said, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh and bubbling spring within them and giving them eternal life. And what was her response? Please give this to me. And I'm going to tell you, please give this to me because of the fact he took time. He was there. He spoke to somebody that his group of people said that they were not worth talking to. And the next thing is, when you think these chains are, only you know what they are? Keep in mind, I didn't have a category. I didn't have anything written. I didn't call you up one at a time and ask you. I said, if you deal with anything, 
And this lady didn't know Jesus other than that he was a Jew. And he looked at her and said, go and get your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. And he called her sins right out there. He didn't do it saying she wasn't worthy. He didn't do it to mock her or to make her feel terrible. He said, you're right. You don't have a husband, for you have five husbands, and you aren't even married to the husband or to the man you're living with now. And you certainly spoke the truth. She went at noon every day because she didn't want people to tell her what she was doing in her sins and make her feel worse for what she was already doing. We know when we do something wrong. We know when we live a life that we shouldn't be. We know when we speak words that we shouldn't. We know when we talk. We know what we're doing is, is, is wrong. And, she, and when we look down in verse 21, it says, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in, true, in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. The truth that he is talking about is being honest with ourselves and being honest with him. When we look at it, what type of sin are we living? We may hide it from our family. We may hide the things that we're doing wrong from our pastor, our moms, our dads our friends, we may, we may hide it from them. We may look clean on the outside, but we're dirty, filthy on the inside. But it's this that's holding us back. It's what we are holding on to our chains that's limiting us. And in Psalms 107, 14, it said, he brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness and broke away their chains. Bondage is the state of being a slave. There's many things that can enslave us. Alcoholism, money, drugs, adultery, pornography, insecurity, anxiety, grudges, Anything that does not bring peace is something that holds us back from what God has for us. Coveting what somebody else has, comparing ourselves. You will never be good enough if you compare yourself to other people and what they ever have. Because you could have something that they don't have. No life is perfect. There was deliverance when the Israelites came out of bondage. Exodus 6.6 6 says, Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. The Egyptians is the equivalent of the world in our lives today. Are you struggling financially? Are you tithing? Because you know what? If you tithe, and I'm not talking about your offering. Tithing means 10%. If you are not giving 10%, you're just giving an offering. God's word says, I will protect you from the devourer with your tithes and offerings, not just one or the other. 
but I can't, I can't afford it. You know what? At one time, we thought we couldn't afford it until God dealt with us. And we started tithing off of what we are worth. And you know what? God's been faithful. Has it been perfect? No. But I will tell you what. I had food on my table. I had gas in my car. I had a roof over my head. I had electricity. It may not have been a lot. But God showed me. God blessed my family with a lineage of being able to can. God blessed my garden. I learned to tithe off of my garden. And you know what? It was to the point where I was like, okay, God, we can stop getting green beans now. How many pickings did we get this year, Mom? Eight? Five? But they weren't small. I, have, I got blessed with tomatoes. I canned my salsa. Would you know that I actually used to be able to feed our family off $80 a month in groceries. God blessed me with that. So when I talk about an abundance, you know, when we tithe, we don't look at it that God's going to give us a lot of money. No, he's going to bless us. How? By providing everything that we need to live. And then there's offerings above that. So keep in mind, are we living with how we're doing it with what God says? Our bondage is our choice. Our bondage, our chains are what are attached to us. We put our hand on, we attach them. If we're never satisfied with what God gives us, nothing's going to ever be good enough. Have you noticed your chains? Some of you came up and got them. There's two more over here. If you have something that is holding you back, come get them. Or raise your hand, I'll bring them to you. But if there's something that's holding you back, if there's something keeping you from going forward, keep in mind, going forward doesn't mean the worldly way. Going forward means what God has for you, what God's blessed you with, what God's given you. God's given us what we can handle and what we can take. I used to want a house full of kids, and I was like, why do I only have one? Because God knew that I needed to give my whole heart and my whole attention to my child. But then he's blessed me by being obedient with that. With a house full of kids now that I don't know why they always come over. I love it. It's great. My husband likes it because as long as they come over, I'm cooking. Amen. But it's, it's great. I love it. But let me ask you this. Are you tired of dusting your area off? Are you tired of dusting your area off and it just doesn't seem like it's getting clean? Are you seeing the wildebeest trail in your life where your chain will only take you the same perimeter every time? Keep in mind, it took the Israelites 40 years to go around a mountain that would have only taken a short time because they didn't grasp it. Are you still dealing with the same issues that you were dealing with five years ago? Maybe it's not God. Maybe it's you. Therefore, say to the Israelites, Israelites are God's people. We may not be Israelites in the flesh, but we are Israelites because we belong to him. 
He says, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from bringing slaves to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Keep in mind, the Israelites complained every step of the way after he took them out of Egypt. He complained. They did not see what was going on. They did not see the blessings. The food that he provided was not good enough. The, the, the fact that he did not have, they didn't wear out of shoes. Keep in mind, how many of you have kids that you're constantly, it seems like every six months, you have to buy clothes or shoes for them? Yeah. Or how about this? I'm just going to ask because I know Jennifer and Justin, they have Logan and Roland, and they're totally different structures, and you try to try to hand stuff down from Logan to Roland only to find that they don't fit. Right? You know why? Because no two kids are the same. No two kids are the same. When we look at this, God provided. He provided for the Israelites, but yet it wasn't good enough. But I want to ask you, is good your standard or God's standard? God said that he will supply your needs. Now, come on, let's think about this. When we were kids and we wanted those Nikes and our parents bought us those Walmart shoes, and we, okay, I used to have these ugly brown shoes because I had to have therapeutic feet or shoes for my feet. Pastor knows what I'm talking about. And if you look in all my pictures, I'm like this because they were ugly. They weren't my patent leather ones that I liked. But that's what I needed. I was born with a crooked foot. My foot turned in. I had to have those shoes. That's what I needed. Did you catch that? They weren't cute, but that's what I needed to fix a problem. So when I was older, I could wear other shoes. So when we look at that, Fred, can you come up? When we look at that, God says, I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the world. I will take care of you. It may not be what we think, but it's what he wants to give us. So for those of you that have your physical chains or that have your spiritual chains, or your, invi your invisible ones. I'm going to read this next scripture, and I'm going to I'm going to read this, and I want you to think about it, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to read Isaiah 52. And as I read that, if you have these and you're willing to do what it says, I don't want you to break them. I want you to come up here. If you didn't pick up any chains and, and you still have something that you want to come and, and, and put up here, I'm going to ask you to bring, bring emotional I'm going to ask you to set them down. But I'm not going to have you go back and sit down. I'm going to have you stay up here because the key thing of this, if we're going to be willing to drop our chains and to put our chains down, we have to be willing to let them go. If you are dealing, what were some of the things that I read? If you're dealing with a physical, spiritual, financial, emotional situation, if you're dealing with addiction, if you're dealing with pride, if you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with feeling unworthy, if your life is all chaos, if you're lonely, if you're sad, I'm going to ask you, 
to bring these. But I'm gonna tell you only if you're willing to leave them. If you're dealing with anything of unforgiveness, you have to be willing to forgive. If you're dealing with anything that you want God to deal to, to handle, you have to be willing to drop it. And it's scary. Because you have to be willing to give up your control and give it to God. And I'm going to tell you, if you are sitting there and you are feeling uncomfortable, God is telling you it's time. So we're going to bow our heads. I'm going to read this scripture, and then I'm going to read Isaiah 52. Father, just let those hearts change. I'm going to read Isaiah 52. And if you feel God is telling you it's time to let go of your chains, it's time to release it, come up here. But if you are able to release it, you have to be able to let it go and let it be. Because if you take it back with you, that chain is still going to limit you. It's still going to hold you back. Isaiah 28, 22 says, Stop your mocking or your chains will become heavier. The Lord Almighty has told me of destruction decreed against the world. The sign of the times are out there. If you come up here and say, God, I'm going to give this to you, and then you don't drop it, you're mocking what God can do in your life. If you hold on to this and, and you, you come down and you drop it, but you just let it go just a little bit, and you want to take it back with you, this is not security. Your chains are not security. Chains are bondage. Awake, awake, Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city, the uncircumcised and defiled will enter, will not enter you again. Shake off your dust. Rise up, sit enthroned, Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck. O oh, daughter, Zion, now a captive. The sovereign Lord is what, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Long ago, my people chose to live in Egypt. Now they are oppressed by Assyria. Remove the chains of slavery from your neck, O daughter of Zion. When I sold you into exile, I received no payment. Now I redeem you without having to pay for you. If you did not pick anything up, but yet you feel that you want to come up here and you want to release yourself of these chains of bondage and you're tired, come up. Come up. Don't waste any day. Are you tired of what you're doing? Are you tired of your situation? Those are the chains you chose to put. God did not do it. You chose. But it's our choice to live in freedom. Today, God is saying, oh, daughter of Zion, dust yourself off and loose yourself of your chains. If you feel that this is the time that you need to give these up, come and just let them go. It's as easy as that. Oh, Father God. 
Father God, it's not easy. But Lord, I ask that today is a day that we lose our chains. We give ourselves wholly to you. And we ask, Lord, that you just are able to minister to us. Help us. Free us like you did from those that were in Egypt. Take us out of our bondage. Jesus, Jesus, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you. dreams, all my plans, Lord, I place them in your hands, I give myself away, oh, I give myself away, so you can use me, I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away, oh Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away, yes, Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am, here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hands. Lord, I'm longing to see. Your desires revealed in me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Stand with me across the place. I give myself away. So you can use me. My life is not my own. Just sing this out, church. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, 
Jesus. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worth. to me oh here I am to myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me thing I love about when other people get to speak is I actually get to take notes. And one thing I got out of what was said today is we must choose. And I wrote down, we must choose to close ourselves with strength. We must choose to put on the beautiful clothes. We must choose to rise from the dust. And we must choose to remove the chains of slavery. This is all good to put him here, but if you walk back to your seat dragging those with you, you know what? They're going to be heavier on you. But if you choose today to leave them here at the foot of the cross, you're going to see your freedom. You're going to walk with a new step because you're not being weighed down today. Jesus declares, your burden is heavy. He says, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you lay these down here, what you're doing is say, Jesus, I picked up your yoke and your burden. I'm giving you mine. And he says, that's okay, child. That's what I'm here for. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we have freedom today. You laid these things down here. You know what? You're sitting in your seat now with freedom from what has bound you down, hold you down, and weighed you down. So when you walk out of here today, walk with the newness in your step, knowing that God's got you, and you don't have this weight anymore on you. Great weight loss program, don't you think? Best one I can think of. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the word spoken today. And I'm believing today, Father, as everyone that walked up here and laid these chains down, Lord. I believe as they walk back to their seat, Father, they can feel that weight lifted off of them. And Father God, as they walk out of here, they're going to walk with a newness in their step and a lightness in their step. Because they're not weighed down anymore. Because we laid them upon you, Lord. We gave you these heavy burdens and picked up yours, as you've told us to do. I thank you, Father, for the word that has been spoken today. Let it penetrate our hearts, Lord. And Father, as we go our separate ways, let's enjoy the warmth of this afternoon. But Lord, bring us back together tonight at 6 o'clock so we can learn how to walk and live the kingdom life. And we'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name.
Amen. Thank you so much for watching our video today. We want to hear from you, so feel free to put in a comment, like, and subscribe, and also go check out our social media pages. Hope to hear from you soon.